Hello artists, Mrs. Larby here. Welcome back to the art room. This week we have a lesson that is a little bit like nature, kind of similar to one of our last lessons. Um, also a little bit of science. This is kind of fun, I think, and it, it makes for a very um, standout piece of artwork too. So I hope you guys enjoy it as much as I have. We're gonna be doing geodes this week, drawing, painting, outlining. Geodes are, well, here's a picture. They're rocks, <laughs> but they're special rocks. Somewhere in the earth, a pocket of air gets trapped and it begins to harden. At some point, water is introduced and it's in this hollow form inside that's hardened. And the mixture of these different elements together begins to grow crystals. Here's what it looks like if you cut a geode in half. You can see the crystals growing inside. It's pretty cool. Here's what happens if you polish that half that's been cut. You can see it even more, right? But I happen to have someone in my home that collects rocks and we have a geode. Here's the outside, it's really rough, kind of looks like there's iron in it. But I do see, you can see a few little sparkles in here. So this is what the inside looks like. It has some really cool silver up here at the top and this white and pale blue. This is just um, a quarter, just one of four of this part of the rock uh, that we have. It's kind of neat um, to see from the edge. You can actually see how rough this outer rock, although it's rounded, it definitely is rough. And I want us to observe that for just a minute because we're gonna be doing the perspective of a geode that's been cut. And we can see this edge uh, where the rock and the crystal starts to meet each other. All right, here's the supplies we need this week. You need paper and your coloring supply, whether that's crayons or pencils. If you have markers, that would be an optional supply this week. And if you have markers, I would really encourage you to use them. Markers are so cool on this project. If you have markers, you'll need a small cup of water and either a paintbrush or a Q-tip. That'll stand in for a paintbrush today. And you might wanna grab the salt shaker from the kitchen table. I'll tell you why in just a little while. So if you have colored pencils and crayons, perfect. We're gonna use those today. If you have markers and you would like to, pull those out and I'll show you both of those options. Well, let's get started. Let me grab my paper. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna draw our geode. Here's my paper. I always like to shift mine to the side a little. Okay, if you have a Sharpie or a marker that is um, waterproof or permanent, sorry, then you're gonna wanna use that for this project. You could also use your black colored pencil or your black crayon. Any of the three of those would work just fine. You do not want to use a black marker from your, your container of markers. These are washable markers. We're gonna add water in a little while. It'll just make the black run everywhere. So you want to be using either your black colored pencil, your black crayon, or a permanent marker like a Sharpie. We're gonna start by drawing our geode. Here's how we draw. We're gonna make the geode fill a good bit of the paper. So a good measurement would be to put your hand in the middle, kind of look around. So we said that the geodes are a roundish shape, round, oval. So this is kind of the size we're gonna make it. I'm gonna start here on the top. Watch for just a minute before you start. So geodes are not even, and we might exaggerate the outside edge just a little. Draw something that you think would be interesting. So there are these areas where it curves back. And I'm just letting my marker kind of have some jagged points and some curved spots. There we go. So this would be the geode cut in half. And then the geode has these beautiful rings inside, these different layers that you can see that have formed inside. So we're going to draw the first layer, which would be, this would be the outside of our rock. The crystal would start forming. And next we're gonna draw an inside layer where the crystal will have formed. It's gonna be about two or three finger widths in the middle. And as you draw this inside part, it's gonna follow the same pattern that you put on the outside which totally makes sense if you think about it. Uh, crystal's been growing on the inside wall of this air pocket. 
and it's going to grow in the same pattern that its foundation is, right? So it's going to be copying this, they're kind of parallel. And if you wanted to, you could add one more layer, a smaller piece in the middle. And that's our geode. Why don't you pause, go ahead and get that part done and then come back and let's talk for one more minute. I'm going to talk to you for a minute about color. Color will, which we've talked a little bit about in a couple of lessons, um, is how we organize colors. And here's the basics again. The color wheel has three primary colors, red, yellow, and blue. And in between these colors are secondary colors. These are the colors that the primary colors can mix together to get. So blue and yellow mix together make green. Red and blue mix together make purple. And yellow and red mix together make orange. And this is our color wheel. Color theory is how these colors relate to each other. And it actually is kind of a cool thing. We're going to look at color theory in a few different ways throughout the year this year. But today I want to talk about what we call warm colors and cool colors. And maybe you've heard this concept before. Warm colors are colors that make you think of something warm. When you look at them in artwork, you might feel the warmth of the sunshine. You might feel the heat of the fire. You might feel the desert. <laughs> Those colors in artwork make you think of something warm. Those colors are red, orange, and yellow. And all the colors that are in between those, right? <laughs> um, Cool colors are things that make you feel cool. Think about a picture of a rainforest. You're going to see greens and blues. Think about nighttime. You see a lot of purples mixed in with the blues. Cool colors are the colors that make you think of things that are cool, like ice. And here's the neat thing about the color wheel. If you were to split the color wheel down the middle, you'll notice that warm colors are on one side, cools on the other. One thing I want to point out, and this question comes up when we talk about color theory together in the classroom. What happens to white and black? <laughs> white and black are not a part of the color wheel. They're considered a shade, which would be black, something that gets darker, or a tint, which would be white, something that gets lighter. So they are shades and tints of the colors that we find in the color wheel, which are also the colors we find in nature in the rainbow. And therefore, they are not a part of this color wheel. They actually um, are just, they just change the colors that we already have. We'll talk more about that again in the future too. So we've got our idea of the color wheel. So for this project this week, I want you to think in terms of warm or cool colors. It's totally your choice. For this project, as we color it in, you're either gonna color your color wheel in warm, which would be these colors, or cool. So go ahead, you can pull out your markers that you would consider warm or cool. You don't have to use all the warm colors or all the cool colors. You could make the whole thing blue if you wanted to. That would be fine. Or you can use all three of the warm colors. It's completely up to you. Uh, but this is how we're going to kind of base the start of our project this week on. I wanted to show you about the colored pencils. If this is what you have, colored pencils or crayons, it makes a beautiful geode. I use the colored pencils along the edges on the inside. I'll show you a little bit more about this in just a moment. And I had just used value with them. You guys have been doing a beautiful job using value on your project so far this year. So I started with my darkest. I went all the way around with my darkest. Then I came back and I lightened it up by changing the grip on my pencil or my crayon until I got to my lightest part. The cool thing that I like about using colored pencils on this project is that you can start to show these little veins where sometimes it gets darker again and lighter again. They're all running parallel. That means they're the same distance away from the sides as you go around. So um, that's kind of a cool part about it too. So if colored pencils and crayon is what you have and what you want to use, go for it. I'm gonna show you how to use marker like watercolor and show you one watercolor technique. I'm actually gonna switch my paper around to show this to you. I've already got one ready for us and we'll get started. Okay, so there we have it outlined on each of those. 
And next we're going to add a little water. So this is a technique that's called bleeding in, in watercolor. We're using the marker like a watercolor today. Actually, the marker works even better than a watercolor today. We're gonna add a little water just to the outside edge. If you don't have a paintbrush, that's fine. A Q-tip works. I've already used, used it a little with the blue. And here we're just gonna go around the edge of this blue kind of grabbing the top of it and notice how the marker wants to go towards the watercolor. I'm using printer paper which might be what you're using at home as well. So it, if you have watercolor paper, or if this were on watercolor paper, you would see that um, you would see it go even maybe a little further because this paper wants to resist the water a little bit. You can see it along the edges starting to grab and it really does look like the inside of a geode, how it has these little uh, fingers of color that come out from the edges. All right, the same thing with the paintbrush. You would go right along the edge. Just adding water along the edge. Notice I didn't put water all the way through. I wanna leave a little bit of space um, in between to be white. I'm just going to let these colors, it takes them just a moment to kind of reach out and start to expand. But you can see that just the edges are starting to expand. Now while it's wet, there's one other thing we can do that would add a little bit of texture. Just like in a real um, cross section of a geode, you would see all these different um, lines and little um, breaks and veins through the center. I have just regular table salt be in your salt shaker at home, put a little in my hand and I'm just gonna pinch some and add it around the edges. This salt will actually absorb the watercolor underneath and when it dries, it will leave these little patches of white where it's absorbed the watercolor in. This will just add a little more texture. That's one of our elements of art. We'll add a little bit more texture. This is actually a technique that I even used in college on watercolor, just to um, add a little bit more of an effect. Here, this would need to dry, not super long, just until the watercolor dries. Um, but this is one that I did, and then you, the salt just comes right off once it's dry. And you can see these little spots where it's absorbed some of the watercolor, the marker up. Just gives it a little more texture. That's a really neat watercolor technique that you could use anytime you're using water with color. All right, and then our last step for fun would be to add some design, some line around the edges to your geode. So I've already begun here. You'll go back with your marker or your black colored pencil or your crayon, whatever you were using. You really do want to take your time with this. You want to go around the edges. You're just expanding that same shape that you made the first time. I'm gonna go around the edges, try to keep it parallel. That means the same distance from each other. That line is like two railroad tracks or two stripes on the road running beside each other. And we'll just continue to do this until it goes off the page. And here's what it might look like when you're finished. Just let it go right off the edge like we did in our optical illusion art. This kind of reminds me of it a little. These lines really add movement to the picture. It looks like there's some vibration to it, doesn't it? But it really makes just this it just pops, right? This piece of art. I hope you guys have fun with this. Um, it, is, it is a project that you could do so many different things on. You can talk your family into trying one. You could have a whole family set of these. That would be fun too. All right, thanks for joining me again today. I enjoy seeing your artwork. My email address is up at the, at the top of our website here. I would love to see it if you have time to send it to me. Let me know what you think of the project and how it works for you. And I'll see you again next week.